Hello, my name is Elise. I'm a second year student studying computer science and data science. Outside of class, I'm a part of Ballroom Dance, Pi Beta Phi, and ACMW. I picked computer science because I love problem solving and data science for its strong emphasis on my second favorite subject, math. I welcome you to the CS at Minds Python video. Today, we are talking about branching in Python, which allows you to control which lines of code to execute in your program depending on a certain condition. But before we begin, let's start with a joke. My roommate asked me to go buy a loaf of bread and, if they had eggs, to buy a dozen. Now he's mad because we have a dozen loaves of bread. Oops, that's a lot of extra bread. Today we are talking about if statements, like if they had eggs. You know that a single equal sign in Python is used to assign a value to a variable. But if a single equal sign is used to assign a value, how do we test for equality? Well, in many programming languages, a double equal sign is used to test for equality. For example, variable a double equals b tests whether variable a is equal to variable b, and the result of that test will either be true or false. Let's look at some more examples. In this first box, year equals 2019 will assign the integer 2019 to the variable year. Year double equals 2018 will test if the value stored in the year has the same value as 2018, which will evaluate to false. On the other hand, year double equals 2019 will evaluate to true. In the second box, the string January is assigned to the variable month. The following two equality tests in this example illustrate that Python is case sensitive. That is, January with a lowercase j evaluates to false and January with an uppercase j evaluates to true. We looked at the equality operator in the previous slide. Just like in math, Python has a handful of built-in operators to do comparisons. See the options shown on your screen. Note that the not equals operator has just one equal sign plus an exclamation point. Also note that the less than or equals to and greater than or equals to operators have the equal sign second, just like the way you say it. The value of these comparison operators is that they allow you to execute different code depending on the result of the comparison. In computer science, we call this behavior branching. With branching, we use an if statement to branch the flow of our program, as shown in the figure on the slide. What code executes then depends on whether the result of the condition is true or whether the result of the condition is false. In other words, if the if condition results to true, we execute the if body code. Otherwise, we skip the if body code and flow to the statement just below the if statement. We illustrate the syntax of the if statement with an example. There are a couple things to notice in this example. First, notice the colon at the end of the condition in the line with the if. You'll likely forget to add this colon someday. We all do. Second, notice that have a great week will always print, even if the year is not 2020. Have a great week will always print since this statement is not indented within the if block. On this slide, we look at the full syntax of an if statement. Check out the ELIF or ELIF, which is short for else if. Both ELIF and else can be used within an if statement if desired. This slide shows the general structure of an if ELIF else block. You can have as many ELIF statements as you need after an if as shown in the syntax block. But keep in mind that you can only have one else in an if statement, and that else must be at the end of the block. This final else will execute only if the initial if and all the subsequent elif statements evaluate to false. As you can see, an if block is an incredibly important tool for controlling the flow of a program. We encourage you to read through the if and elif example on this slide. And again, as I mentioned previously, don't forget the colon. This slide provides another if example. In this example, both an elif and else condition are used. Think about what happens if the user enters CS. In that case, yay, computer science will be printed. What happens if the user enters ME? Then the initial if condition will evaluate to false and the elif will evaluate to true. Thus, in this case, is this your first CS course will be printed. And what happens if the user enters EE? In this case, your major is EE will be printed. Lastly, when will so long be printed? I hope you've concluded that so long will be printed at every execution of the code. If not, please come to office hours. Here's another if example. If the user inputs Emma, the first if will evaluate to true and your name is the best will be printed. Nothing else will print even though Emma has a length of four. What if the user inputs Luke? In this case, your name is the best will not print, but your name is four letters and not Emma will print. Finally, consider what happens if the user enters the name Grace. Grace is not equal to Emma, Grace is not equal to four characters, and Grace is not more than seven characters. Thus, with this input, nothing will be printed to the screen. We suggest you pause the video on this example and consider what is printed with different input numbers. 
I like this example as it illustrates how you can make assumptions from previous conditions failing. For example, you don't have to include the condition greater than 12 in the you're a teenager branch, as you can assume the age is greater than 12 if this branch is executed. In addition to considering different inputs, you may want to type this code into a Python file and execute it. We are now going to talk about scope and its representation in Python. Scoping refers to whether a variable is visible in a given part of your code. In Python, indentation is extremely important. Indentation helps with the style and readability of your code, and also denotes the scope of variables that exist during the execution of the code. In this code, you can assume the variable i was previously defined in the program. Since i was previously defined, we are able to use it within the if statement shown. Before we provide another scoping example, let's use our knowledge of branching and answer the following questions. What will be printed if the variable i is 3, negative 2, and 4? We suggest you pause the video as you walk through this code and answer these questions. Then, once you have your answers, type the code into a Python file, execute it, and see if you are correct. Here's another slide where we suggest you pause the video and find the bugs in this code. After you have found the bugs from looking at the code, type the code into your Python interpreter and see if you are correct. We really hope you pause the video and do the exercises we suggest. These types of exercises are valuable for new Python programmers, especially for those who will be taking the Python exam in 101. This example includes two very common errors that new programmers do. Good luck! We hope you noticed two errors with the input statement. First, the function int needs to be used to cast the user input to an integer. Also, something like, how many pets do you have, would be more appropriate than, what is your age? This code isn't about your age. A second error is in the if statement. We don't want to assign pets to zero. Instead, we want to check for equality. Thus, you need a double equal sign in this if statement. A third error exists in the else statement. Notice that this last print statement will print even if the user enters a negative number for pets. Now, consider how you might fix this issue. We encourage you to find the bugs in this last slide as well. This one is tricky and another error that new programmers make, so we strongly encourage you find the bugs, fix them, and then type the code into your Python interpreter to see if you're correct. Good luck! That concludes our video. We hope you now understand if statements and how powerful they can be to control the flow of your program. Thanks for tuning in. See you around campus.